As you'll hear, baseball people seem to accept it as just part of the game. And that pitch hits Greg Madison. He's going after Danny Moore. Here we go again. The hitters have been a little more anxious to charge him around this year than in other years. And it's set off a few brawls uh, throughout the summer. We've been involved in a couple of them. I'm one of those people, if you see two little kids fight, don't go separate. Let them fight. Let them fight. Well, how about if one of the little kids is throwing rocks at the head of the other kid? Well, then the other guy finds a way maybe to break his arm off, you know? They, they, they have a way of settling. And the National League, where they had the big rule bar over there with uh, Atlanta and San Diego, I think that's ridiculous. And if someone's going to get hurt, Seriously hurt. Perez's first pitch hits him. They had a pitcher after we beat him two out of three and virtually knocked him out of the race. Drilled our first hitter that fourth game right in the back. We were fairly sure, or beyond a shadow of a doubt actually, that Perez had hit Wiggins on purpose. The best thing to do is go out and try to get that pitcher, not necessarily to hurt him, but try to give him some indication that we're not going to let you throw at us. Oh, that ball was right at him. That was right at him. We got problems here. We got problems here. That's 12. We'll put the bat down. I don't think that Dick uh, Williams was wrong in anything that he did. He had to send a message to this pitcher. I don't want any more of my hitters thrown at by you. There goes Whitson. Whitson and Dick Williams are out of the game. What happened over there was... Uh, uh, San Diego's pitchers had bad aim. <laughs> it took them too long to get them. <laughs> For the fourth straight time, Perez coming to the plate. We've got one going now. And there are some hot-tempered individuals out there. It's not something that anybody's proud of, uh, what happened there. When your hitters are being thrown at or something, really you have two choices, and that is one, to either protect them and try to stop this thing before they keep getting hit more and more and more, or you simply do nothing and then run the risk of getting more people hit or getting completely intimidated and losing the game. You've got to find out if that hitter can be intimidated. That's a part of a psychological edge. You'll take a, a hitter like a Don Baylor, will stand up there, and he'll just turn like this and, and not even move. Check swing and a little tapper down the third baseline. Lopez got up to hurry, throws it wide, past Garbay at first base, and a... To Dave Winfield or a Willie Mays, they will jump back out of the way, go down, whatever it might be. It's just their way of, of precaution. There's too many guys with a lot of power in this league, and you've got to pitch inside. Occasionally, balls are going to get away. I think that most of the balls that are thrown close to hitters are not intended brushback pitches. I don't mind being brushed back off the plate, but I'm going to get right back on the plate anyway. And uh, if, if you're intimidated by the pitcher, you're not going to be able to hit in this league. I always maintain, show me a guy that can't pitch inside, and I'll show you a loser. Brushback is one thing. Throwing at a guy's head is another. When we played, we got thrown at each other at it. At us too. Now I have pitchers tell me they're going to hit me. <laughs> when somebody's doing something to uh, uh, interfere with your uh, mode of making a living, there's going to be tempers lost. I, I, you know, you'll never eliminate that. And if everybody was buddy buddy in this ball game, nobody would pay to get into the park. comes close to you, whether it be at your shoulders, whether it be at your feet, or whether it be at your head. You can see that career going out the window, Dickie Thone this year. Definitely an accident when he was hit, but still, it might be a career-ending thing. He hasn't regained his vision yet.
When we come back, we'll talk live with four baseball professionals about what can be done to stop beanball injuries. We'll talk to National League umpire Lee Wire, Washington Post sports writer Tom Boswell, former center fielder Paul Blair, who was injured by a beanball, and Hall of Fame pitcher Don Drysdale. The beanball, I don't think there's any place for that in baseball. Uh, you can really cripple a player uh, hitting him in the head area. Uh, could really hurt a guy, could ruin his career. Now live from our Los Angeles Bureau, Lee Wire, a National League umpire for the past 22 years. From our affiliate, KGTV in San Diego, Tom Boswell, sports writer for the Washington Post. In our New York studios tonight, Paul Blair, a former center fielder for the Baltimore Orioles and the New York Yankees, who in 1970 was hit in the eye by a beanball. That ball broke every bone on the right side of his face. And also from San Diego, Don Drysdale, ABC sports commentator, former Dodger pitcher, and a member of baseball's Hall of Fame. And during his career, Don was known for a high inside pitch that many batters found menacing. Don Drysdale, when you see lots of pictures of hit batsmen back to back, it all looks rather serious, and I suppose this is the darker side of baseball. How many incidents like that are accidents, and how many are intentional? I would say that probably uh, most of them are by accident. I think that uh, there are maybe today, I can't really speak, I'm not on the field anymore, but uh, there might be a few intentional. I think uh, you probably saw more intentional uh, in the years past than what you see today because of the certain rulings that we have today. But I think there's a very difference in wording right here. And I think, number one, I think you said it very clearly at the very start, the bean ball. That's an intentional throwing at the head. So consequently, it seems to be an adjective right there that has taken over this whole particular area. And I think you've got to explain between the two. Well, Lord, let's talk about, in effect, what's okay and what's not. What is the pitcher's code of ethics in all this? Is it all right to, to come inside under the chin, all right to brush him back? And if so, aren't we really just talking about a couple of inches either way, hitting him or, or just putting a little intimidation in effect in him? Well, I think you're talking a little bit more than a, than a couple of inches, and I think what the, the, there's a couple of, of, of uh, lines in there, is, I think as far as my opinion is concerned, as far as that code is, and number one, I think you've, uh, uh, a pitcher has to have a certain part of the plate which is going to be his, and the hitter can have a certain part of the plate which is going to be his. I, I always maintain that. That was my thought. I just don't want to have to tell you what part of the plate's going to be yours on this particular pitch, that's all. So in there can lie a problem. If you're... Uh, uh, if you're looking for a pitch down and away and I want to come uh, inside and I move it up in here and you're diving out here, you've got a good chance of hitting yourself. And uh, I think that, number two, you've got to protect your hitters. Hitters have to be protected. And uh, there's only one man that can do that, and that's the pitcher. What do you mean by protect your hitters? Well, if they go down, uh, somebody else on the other side has to go down. I just had a very common rule, and it was very simple, that one of mine go down, then two of yours go. Two of mine, four of yours. And it really doesn't take a Rhodes Scholar to figure that out. So if they throw at your guys, you can throw at theirs. Paul Blair, yep. you were on the receiving end of that, and it, and it uh, may have shortened your career. What, what was your code of ethics, and what was okay and what wasn't? Well, um, my code of ethics was basically I was an inside hitter, so I looked for the ball on the inside part of the plate most of the time when I went to the plate. And the, uh, the pitch on the outside part of the plate I had trouble with, so I just tried to foul it off uh, any time that I possibly could. But... Uh, I think if a pitcher wanted to brush, uh, brush me back off the plate because I did stand on top of the plate, uh, from my shoulders down was plenty of room for them to throw at. Uh, throwing at someone's head I don't think is, is the proper thing to do simply because uh, you can end somebody's career. Uh, Tony C. got his career uh, ended because he was hit in the eye. Uh, you're, you're referring to Tony Conigliaro in yes, 1967. Tony, right. right. And uh, he was never able to recover from uh, uh, the, the eye injury that he received. Do you think you ever fully recovered from your injury? Oh, without a doubt. I had no problem whatsoever. Uh, people say that I stepped away from the plate after I got hit, but if they noticed my career, I stood right on top of the plate and I always took, uh, stepped away from the plate. I was a dead inside hitter. I was a pull hitter. And that's just the way I hit. Do you uh, think pitchers deliberately threw at you when you were in the major leagues? Uh, I think they tried to knock me off the plate. I don't think they tried to throw at my head. Uh, the pitch that I, the particular pitch that I got hit with, uh, I think I was a little careless. I was, as Don said, I was looking for a slider on the outside part of the plate, and he threw a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Uh, only uh, Ken Tatum knows for sure if he was throwing at me. Myself, personally, I don't think he was throwing at me. It was my mistake, my fault for looking for the wrong pitch. Lee Wire, you've had 22 years of dealing with this as an umpire. 
how do you maintain control when you begin to think maybe? Do you have to be a mind reader? What do you do? Well, there's certain situations that uh, after a uh, batter hits a home run, the next pitch, if it comes right at the next, at the next batter's head, you definitely know that the pitcher is throwing at him. And uh, you have to warn the pitcher, the real estate, that you warn the pitcher, he gets fined. You warn the opposing pitcher and manager, if that pitcher retaliates, that both of them are out of the game. Also, the pitcher that threw the first pitch, if he is out, if he throws another one, then he is out of the game and his manager is also gone. Well, but those are the rules, and they really haven't worked, have they? I mean, we've seen incident after incident every time, it seems, that you look at the sports highlights uh, on the 11 o'clock news, uh, it seems that you're seeing another of these incidents. Not just where somebody is hit, but where a batter is charging the mound, going after the pitcher, and a full-scale melee breaks out, breaks out. Aren't we having more of that? Well, I guess on my crew, uh, I've been lucky this year. We just had one incident. Um, Joaquin Andahar threw a pitch to Ozzie Virgil that was kind of inside and at his head, and Ozzie went out to the mound. We tried to stop him. There was a little bit of a fight then. Uh, Eric Gregg, was, was my partners were Dutch Rennert and Eddie Monacue and Eric Gregg, and Eric was behind the plate that night. He warned Andahar and uh, Whitey Herzog that if he threw again, they'd be out of the game. He also warned... Uh, the opposing pitcher and Paul Owens, if he threw that he would be, they would both be out of the game. So that about two innings later, there's a pitch inside right at Juan Samuel's head, and uh, Eric Gregg threw out Andahar, and uh, we also threw out Whitey Herzog, which is a real estate. Tom Boswell, and, it is a rather pastoral game, baseball. This all seems to be uh, incongruous to talk about this as part of baseball. Uh, how does it fit in? Is baseball getting more violent? You write about it. Do you think that's happening? Uh, I think in uh, just over the 10 or 12 years that I've been covering baseball, uh, it has gotten more violent. And I think one of the reasons is something that Don Drysdale alluded to. For decades, the inside half of the plate belonged to the hitter and the outside half of the plate belonged to the pitcher. But in the last 10 or 15 years, we've seen changing theories of hitting. Charlie Lau, the famous batting instructor uh, who died this spring, uh, really changed the whole nature of hitting, I think, from Mike Schmidt to Pete Rose to... Cecil Cooper in both legs, you see hitters who now charge the plate. They stand far off the plate to start with and then dive into the plate. And the whole set of rules has changed. Now you have hitters who take away the outside half of the plate and the inside corner is where the pitcher has to live. All right. And I think we've seen many brawls precipitated by that. All right, if these kinds of brawls are occurring and if pitchers feel now, since they've lost the inside of the plate, as you say, uh, that they have to retaliate or that they have to, to, uh, to in effect, stand their ground. They, is, they feel they have to work inside, I okay. think, is more. What does this tell kids about baseball? I think your new baseball commissioner, Peter Ubaroth, is very concerned about that. He keeps using the word emulative problem, meaning that he thinks when players, uh, young kids see players fighting on the field for 15 minutes, he thinks that that's a serious, both an image problem for baseball and, and a real substantive problem. And I think that you'll see Ubaroth crack down in this. I think it's one of his top priorities to change the whole set of rules that surround this area. It might be the first dramatic uh, decision you see him make. All right, we'll come back and continue our conversation in a moment and talk some about what might be. Continuing our conversation now, I'd like to go back to Don Drysdale. Don, you said earlier you had sort of an unwritten rule that if they threw at one of yours, you'd throw at two of theirs. What do you think, to go back to the question I asked Tom, what do you think that says to kids? Well, I think, number one, what we got to look at, first of all, I've never hit a man in the head in my life, so that doesn't, that part of it, I, I didn't bother me at all. But I think as far as uh, the youngsters are concerned, you've got to, number one, realize, and this isn't the answer that, to this whole problem, but they got to realize that this is, now it's, you're pay, this is a job. You're getting paid. This is not the Sunday pickup game and where you go out and you play for a keg of beer or something like that. This is a man's livelihood, a family livelihood, and yes, you're not trying to deprive any hitter of that but yet on the other hand don't have the hitter deprive a pitcher of that and I think it's because of the new rule that's given false security to hitters of the inside pitching where it's the warning rule and I think it's the rule and I've talked to too many umpires and maybe Lee would would agree they don't care for that rule that much let the players play it's been here well over a hundred years they'll take care of it and don't have the people in the business suits that are justifying a job on a rules committee who have never been down there and had a had a uniform on try and tell you how to play the game the but, players will take care of it. well now you confuse me what new rule do we talk about here well we're talking about a rule you see the warning rule now more than ever and what it does it it's the inside pitch where the umpire just what lee was talking about will warn uh, uh, a pitcher so you warn the pitcher once guys, 
He wanted I've to seen guys like this, and Lee, uh, maybe you've seen people, he hadn't called it because I've, I've pitched to Lee before. I've seen balls that far off the plate where hitters back off and jackknife off the plate and pitchers get a warning. Well, that isn't right. All right that Lee. pitch is not a knockdown pitch. All right, Lee Wire, how about that rule? Well, talking to Don, Don was one of the best at brushing a guy back from the plate. There's a lot of difference between the bean ball and the brush back. A bean ball is when a pitcher deliberately throws at the guy's head. Brush back, which Don used to do very well, as good as anybody I've ever seen in baseball, would brush him back away from the plate, but he'd keep it around the belt or just a little bit up, but inside enough so that the batter knew that he wasn't going to dig in on Don. There's something that confuses me here, and, and I guess it's a, I'm not a professional athlete. Don, do you really have that much control that you can, that you can uh, uh, differentiate between brushing the guy back and coming uh, that close to him and actually hitting him? Do you have that much control? Well, yeah, you, you do in that respect because, number one, you should. You, you, you're pitching in here, and as Paul will tell you, too, any time that you, a pitcher comes back in here, and Lee Wire will tell you the same thing, pitcher starts throwing behind the neck, you know, that, that's dangerous. That's right. dangerous. Paul Blair, I have a statistic here, which I suppose it takes a baseball aficionado to understand. But in the American League last year, there were 425 hitters hit. And in the National League, only 292. And that is interpreted um, as meaning that because in the American League, pitchers don't bat, there is no way to retaliate against the pitchers. Therefore, they are a little more likely to throw at a hitter. Now, you say they don't throw intentionally at hitters, but doesn't a statistic like that indicate that that's exactly what they are doing? Well, uh, if you're going to look at it then, uh, on that aspect, sure, uh, uh, pitchers uh, in the American League will apt to throw uh, on, at, at a hitter a little quicker than they do in the National League because that pitcher has to walk to the plate. Uh, my theory uh, to stop it all was if a pitcher hits a guy in the head, and the guy is no longer able to play or he goes on a disabled list, that pitcher should not be able to pitch as long as that kid is, uh, that particular player is on a disabled list. Don't let this guy put a guy in the hospital and then still go out there and continue to earn his, uh, earn a living. As long as that guy's in the hospital, that pitcher should not be able to pitch and he should, uh, uh, should not be able to earn his salary as long as the guy that he put in the hospital, uh, the same, uh, the same thing because I think if they would do that, a major league pitcher should have good enough control, as Don did, to brush a guy back without hitting a guy in the head. Uh, when you start throwing in people's head, then I think the pitcher should suffer the same as the player. A very interesting suggestion. Now, Lee Wire, what do you think of that? That the uh, pitcher should have to be out of baseball as long as the uh, man that he hurt is out of baseball? Well, that might be one way of stopping this. I think uh, the beanball is very unsportsmanlike, and I don't think there's any uh, place in baseball for it. Somebody could be put out for life or even get killed and if that happens it's very unfortunate that it better it happen. Hockey has a third man rule uh, Lee where the third man into a fight is automatically ejected can be fined. Uh, would you like something like that? Well if you're going to do that you're going to have people coming from both dugouts and you're going to eject a lot of people and they're not going to have enough players to play the game so I don't think that third man rule would uh, work in baseball at all. Tom Boswell, uh, we're now in the World Series and playoffs. Uh, do we see more of this in uh, these high-pressure games or less than in the regular season? It's interesting. In the past, uh, you generally haven't because there's a, a gentleman's agreement that you don't argue with the umpire, you don't knock hitters down as much in the postseason. But last year, you saw something interesting. The Baltimore Orioles do not like to throw at hitters because they don't like their hitters thrown at in turn. But in the, white, in the uh, playoffs last year, they played the Chicago White Sox, who were a very belligerent team, a team that didn't mind fighting uh, a lot of hitters that charged the plate. And the Orioles made a conscious decision to pitch inside, to challenge the White Sox there, to knock them down if they had to. And the White Sox and Orioles had two uh, bench-clearing fights last year, which was very unusual for the Orioles. So yes, I think as you see the stakes getting higher, uh, I think people get a little uh, more intense. Also, uh, an interesting point that Paul Blair brought up, but I think it's totally impractical uh, to try and pair off an act, uh, those two uh, those two things. If a, player thro a pitcher throws a slider low and inside and breaks a batter's ankle totally by accident, I don't think you can ask that that I pitcher be out for I didn't say the ankle. Months. I said if he hits a guy in the head. Ankle, ankle is a good point. Ankle is Fine. completely different.